this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm going to show you how to install the Crucial T500 Pro NVMe SSD. This is a Gen 4 NVMe drive and a really simple one to set up, and a fantastic drive which offers up to 7400 megabytes per second read speed. Here I'm going to show you the hardware setup of this drive, how to install it on your motherboard, and then I'm going to show you how to get it working in Windows so that Windows will recognize it and so that you can use it and how to test it to make sure it's running at the right speeds and other things to be aware of as we go through. So stick with me till the end to find out more about that. Now this is a fairly easy drive to install. Being a Gen 4 drive, you'll naturally need a motherboard that supports NVMe Gen 4 if you want to make the most of that speed. And I've done a guide separately on all the things to know about NVMe SSDs. But in this instance, I'm using a Asus Strix Z790 motherboard which is the second iteration alongside a Core i9-14900K. So that should ensure maximum speed, but this drive will be backwards compatible with future ports. So if you're to use it in a Gen 5 NVMe spot, for example, if you happen to have one of those on your motherboard, and you should get good speeds out of it. But naturally, if you try and use it on an older motherboard, you won't make the most of those speeds. So it is worth knowing about that. Now, the drive doesn't come with any screw. And I want you to note that now. This motherboard doesn't require any screws, but some older generations may do. So I'll get to that in a second and talk about the setup. There are some important things to bear in mind though. You do need to make sure that you remove any heat shielding beforehand and any stickers on the thermal pads. I've done a video separately on this and the importance of these thermal pads, those heat shields, and the sticker on the drive itself. You'll notice that I'm not gonna remove that, for example, but I do take off the plastic stickers over these thermal pads because you'd be surprised how much difference they make and they are both underneath and above the drive as well now on this motherboard it just slots into the port then pushes down in there and then there's a little plastic latch that you maneuver over the top now on other older motherboards you may find you need an m2 screw this isn't included in the box but you can see it here with a wd black sn750 as a demonstration and you can buy these screws separately they are included with your motherboard in most instances but if you haven't got that original packaging, you can still buy them separately. And some boards also have the screws for screwing this down in the heat shielding that goes over the top. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Don't forget to remove those stickers, as I said. Now you'll notice that I've placed the drive in the top slot on the motherboard. Generally, that's where you get the best speed in most mother motherboards. And in fact, in this one, you can get top speeds out of any of these ports. So I'm showing you me installing the Crucial P5 Plus, P3 and T700 in the other ports that are available. So you do have choices and you are able to install multiple drives in these other ports just remember to use these stickers and take those off and make sure the thermal pads are there now obviously you don't have to do this you can just install one drive but the point is generally if you only have one i'd recommend putting it in the top spot that's usually where you get the best speed and it's usually where the best heat shielding is as well is and in this instance that's not the case but sometimes you'll find larger heat shielding on that top port and it will ensure that the drive runs cool which is really important so that's the setup there obviously i'm showing you all this outside the case to make it a little easier you can do it once it's installed in your pc then we go into windows and we want to search for disk management or create and format hard disk partitions this is in windows 11 but the logic applies the same in windows 10 this opens up the disk management tool. You'll notice that it's popped up with three different drives here. And I want to show this as a demonstration because I actually had two SSD drives in. So 2.5 inch SSDs at the same time as this drive. So working out which is which is important because obviously you want to know when you're going through the formatting process, which drive is which. I now have three drives that are brand new and the disk management tools recognizing them. But it's important to note that file manager wasn't so Windows Explorer wasn't showing those drives. So you do need to go through this process of formatting the drives first of all. Now you can look at the disk itself, right click on it and then click properties. And up there you'll see the name of the drive. Now this is actually the BX500 SSD1, which is my 2.5 inch SSD. So if you know the name of the model, you can hopefully see that there and recognize it or give a Google to that number. So CT2000BX. The other alternative is to use something like Hardware Info 64, which is a free download that you can get that gives you loads of information about your system. And using that tool, you can then see what drives you've got installed 
and the name of them as well. You'll see in the bottom right, all the NVMe drives listed there and their respective names. But you can also dive into the software further. So you, for example, you can see you can go into the drive section here and then you can find the relevant drive. So I know I'm looking for the T500 and again, you can see this says CT2000 T500. So that is the name of this drive. It's the T500 from Crucial and you can see that listed here. You'll also notice that you have that again uh, as part of the property. So if you right click and disk management and find the properties, you can then find the relevant drive. You then need to format it, assign it a drive letter and give it a volume label. So doing this will then format that drive so it can be used. And obviously you'll then be able to find that in File Explorer, in Windows Explorer and recognize the drive as the one that you want. So this shows you the format process for each of those drives. If you're installing multiples, if you're just installing one, obviously it's a lot easier. The drive will pop up, then you just go through that format process and then it should work and be recognized by Windows. Once that happens, Windows Explorer will likely open and show you the multiple different blank drives that you have, or obviously just the one if you just installed one drive, and then you can go about using them as you would. The other thing to check in Hardware Info 64 is just how many lanes you've got. So you can see that this drive uh, is PCI 4, so it's obviously Gen 4, which is what we want. And if you go into each of the drives that you've got, or if you're trying to find out whether your drive's running at the right speed, you click on this, you can then click on the ID button just below that. So you can see there's basically a hyperlink listed there. And if you click on that, that will then take you through into another section, which will tell you more about that drive. And then you can see the PCIe Express numbers. So the version number four, and then the maximum link width, which is the number of lanes it's got, which is four times, which is what we want to see in this instance. So it's got four lanes, giving you Gen 4 speed, which is the speed that it should get. Now, if you want to double test that in a more easier way, what you can do is download Crystal Dismark, which is a free tool that you can run a benchmark on your drive. So I ran a benchmark on this to just test it out and see if it's getting the maximum speed that it should do. Just keep in mind again, as I said, it should get 7,400 megabytes per second read speed and roughly similar write speeds as well. And this is the end result of that. So I'm actually a little bit slower marginally. Obviously, the experience is going to vary, but the top results are when it's transferring and reading larger files. And then this basically gives you a synthetic test to show you what speed you can expect with either large files or lots of little ones and the overall experience there. What you'll notice is we have slower speeds near the bottom. That's where it's transferring lots of files at once and that can slow things down. And if the temperatures get too high, you may find that these scores are lower. So that's worth bearing in mind. That was why I was talking so much earlier on about heat shielding and stickers. Now, if for some reason your drive's not recognized at all, you may well want to head into the BIOS. If you couldn't find it in Windows and you can't find it through a disk management tool, you may need to go into your BIOS. So turn your PC off, then run your setup, press delete and head over into the BIOS. In there, you should find the drive listed, hopefully. You may see it on the first page as one of the NVMe SSDs that you have installed. And then you'll probably need to dive into some of the advanced settings and go through those to look for the PCIe NVMe SSD settings or PCIe settings. Make sure while you're there that you turn on XMP for your RAM so it's running at good speed and resizable bar as well if you've got a modern setup. But what you want to do is go into the advanced settings down the bottom. Now it's worth noting that this will vary from motherboard to motherboard. So unfortunately I can't show you a definitive sort of guide on, on this. But if you are finding it's not appearing in Windows, it's likely a SSD setting in your BIOS, which you just need to tweak. So you can see we can go through, I'd look for anything with NVMe configuration in it. You may find that you can go in there and tweak and adjust the settings there to tell it what sort of drive generation it is, for example. You'll also find it in PCIe subsystems and those sorts of listings. So just have a hunt around and see if you can find anything around PCIe bandwidth and other things. Just look for M2 configuration and tweak the settings, basically set it to Gen 4 to match your drive. Hopefully you found all this info useful. If you did, consider subscribing. Also check out the links in the description to other related content on NVMEs and improving your system performance. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. 
If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.